Piero, also known as the Jester, is the first of the Fatui Harbingers. He founded the Fatui alongside the Saritza, personally recruited many other Harbingers, and even witnessed the events of the Cataclysm. In this video, I'll go over what we know about him, as well as potential for him in the future. Also, if you liked this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, let's move right on and get into the video. Unlike the other Harbingers I've discussed in detail on this channel, we have never met Piero in the game or seen him in other media such as the manga. At first, this may make it seem as though we don't know much about him, but that isn't true at all. There have been plenty of lore drops about him, be it through dialogue, artifact and weapon descriptions, or character stories. So to start off, as usual, I'll go over what we know about him. Piero is the first of the Harbingers, as well as the first member of the Fatui in general, being a co-founder alongside the Saritza, the Cryo Archon of Shnezhnaya. He knows what happened in Conria, potentially even witnessing the destruction of the Abyssal Nation. In the Mocking Mass description, he claims he could have stopped it but was ignored by everyone, which eventually caused the nation's downfall and led him to forming the Fatui. After that, he began recruiting members for this group. He began traveling around to that trying to find individuals who had been cast aside like Dross, in an attempt to convince them to join the Fatui. He found a young woman whose heart had all but burned away, a mad scientist who had been cast out by his peers, and a young man who was neither mortal nor god. There is potential that he recruited more Harbingers, we'll just have to wait to hear their stories. Anyways, in more modern times, he is more tied to the game's events than you may think. In the Unreconciled Stars event, he was the one who sent Scaramouche to Liyue to uncover the truth behind the sky and the stars. He was also behind all of the affairs in Inazuma. He sent Scaramouche to oversee a delusion factory, which helped continue the Inazuma Civil War and the Vision Hunt decree, as well as sending Senora to continue her mission of collecting the Gnosis from the other Archons. After the war ended, Piero quickly sent orders to evacuate from Inazuma. He lost two Harbingers in this mission, Senora being slain by the Raiden Shogun, and Scaramouche running off with the Electronosis. This leads me to believe he might be angry about the situation and may get directly involved with the story, but before I dive into that, I want to break down his potential lore and his connection to the Cataclysm 500 years ago. We know from the Mocking Mask's description in the Pale Flame Artifact set, which I've gone over in a previous video, that Pierre was alive during the Cataclysm. He claims that he was not on the same level as the other sages, so they didn't listen and tore away the Veil of Sin. Basically, if they had listened, he believes that the Cataclysm would have never happened and that Conria would still be thriving. Quick disclaimer here, the sages mentioned here are not the same sages as in Sumeru. The actual translation is more along the lines of the worthy virtuous ones. Still, I do not think this is a reference to vision bearers, but instead a reference to the rulers of Conria itself. Perhaps Piero himself is from Conria, and the reason he fights against the Abyss now is as an act of revenge, due to them not listening to him all that time ago. This also means it is possible that Piero knew or still knows Dainsleaf, another character we know from Conria. It may even be possible that they are the same person. Both lived through the Cataclysm, both seem to know more than they let on, both failed to prevent the destruction of Conria, and both have the desire to right the wrongs of the world, wanting to even rewrite fate itself. Also, Dainsleaf does wear a mask over the right side of his face, so that could be another little hint. I'm still not entirely sold on this idea, but it would be quite the interesting twist. In any case, Piero does have quite a bit of knowledge about, well, everything. He knew that the stars and sky were a lie before he sent Scaramouche to Liyue, meaning he probably wanted him to figure out the truth. He also knew how to manipulate both the Inazuman Shogunate and the Watatsuma Resistance into dragging out the Civil War for the benefit of the Fatui. Needless to say, he could potentially be quite a threat in the future, so let's move on to what I believe his story could be going forward. I think most of us can agree that Piero will definitely have a huge role in Genshin Impact's story at some point. 
Who he is and what he's seen is so important that it would be a waste to have him as a side character. In my opinion, it's not a matter of if we meet him, but when, and what role he'll have when we finally encounter him. First off, I believe he will be mentioned more and more times in our future travels, which would build up anticipation towards him. He will be super important to the main story, and I believe dropping subtle hints about him or even just flat out saying that he was responsible for certain events that we've already seen, and even crazier events that we have yet to witness would be very good at setting up anticipation. One of the ideas I have regarding him is that he was the one who assigned Zenyora to retrieve the Gnosis, not the Tsaritsa, and that he wants them for himself to get revenge against the Abyss and Celestia. Whether he is Dane's leaf or not, I believe this would make a bit of sense, as his goal is to rewrite fate, and to do that, he would probably need to get Celestia out of the way. There is also the possibility that he shows up before we visit Sejnaya, perhaps in an abyssal location similar to Enkonomiya. If he truly is from Conria, he would want to know what the abyss is up to in order to put a stop to it. This does provide more evidence towards him being Dainsleaf, but like I said, I'm still not too sure on that. I do believe that he will definitely be on a quest of vengeance, as he was betrayed by his own people who tore away the Veil of Sin, and then again by Celestia, who destroyed his homeland when they found out about it. His resentment towards Celestia makes me think he might even betray the Tsaritsa, as she may have had a role in the Cataclysm that even he didn't know of. If he found out, most likely during the Snezhnaya Archon quests, we would most likely learn his true motives and ideals then. Either way, he is going to be one of the big players in the overall story, and with what we know about unreconciled stars in the Inazuma Archon quests, he is also a big figure behind the scenes. It is just a matter of time before he comes out from behind the curtain and reveals what his plans truly are. Anyways, that is all I have for you about Piero today. As the first Fatui Harbinger, I'm certain he will have a major role in the story at some point, it's just a matter of time before we see him. I personally can't wait until he gets introduced, as his connection to Conria could give us some more insight into what happened 500 years ago. I would love to hear your thoughts regarding him in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.